Hello everyone, I'm Ian Wishart and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the second outing of the second season of the Take A Pew podcast. And of course, the venerable Simon Clark is alongside me. Hello everyone. Oh, don't start that again, mate. Now, may I just say at the start, it would be really helpful if you would subscribe to or follow us however you're listening. I promise it doesn't entail any junk mail or spam. Go on, just do it now. Anyway, today, as usual, we'll be exploring the life and loves of our guests who this time is none other than a former army chaplain and minister of the United Reformed Church in Camberley, Surrey. No need to apologise, mate. Eh? I thought you said sorry. No, Surrey. Yes, our guest today is the Reverend Mike Thomason. Thomas Michelson. What? Is there something wrong with your hearing, mate? Pardon? Never mind. So, without further ado, here's episode two of season two of Take a Pure Just For You with the Reverend Mike Thomason. You what? Take a pew. And here we are in the heart of Camberley at High Cross Church and we are joined by the Reverend Mike Thomason. Mike, welcome to the show and please Take, Take a, a pew. pew. Oh, thank you very much. It's great to be here. <laughs> uh, hello, Mike. It's great to meet you. Perhaps you would introduce yourself to our lovely listeners. Yeah, hello. I'm uh, Reverend Mike Thomason. I'm 44. I had to think about that. That's quite worrying, isn't <laughs> it? Um, and I'm married to Sue with two wonderful children who come to school here in Camberley. I, I was ordained in 2002, so if you do your maths right, yes, that's yeah. 20 years this year. Big celebration. Yeah, yeah where's it gone? Yeah. Um, and I'm currently the Minister of High Cross Church here in Camberley, which is a real honour. Brilliant. Thanks, Mike. As ever, we're looking forward to hearing about your journey through life thus far, exploring some of your favourite things, getting your insight into a tricky Bible dilemma in Is It True? Oh dear. And enjoying, <laughs> enjoying your spiritual pearl of wisdom. Yeah, indeed we are. And also to posing you one of my random questions and unpacking your perfect picnic. Splendid. So much to get through and so much fun to be had. Anyway, Mike, let's crack on. Where did life all start for you? I believe it was somewhere not especially close to Vladivostok. It was nowhere near Vladivostok. No, good, but good. I do remember as a, a child following the route of the Blue Peter car oh, across oh. to Vladivostok. I don't know if anybody wow. remembers that. Gosh, that's, that's going sure. back a bit. It is going back a bit. It was a Ford Sierra, I think. Years right. Ago. right gosh. Yeah, on an overland expedition. Anyway, but yeah. I'm from nowhere near Surrey either. I'm from a bit north, um, but it's proper north, so it's Lancashire. Right. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So it's a great place. Yes, very nice. And uh, whereabouts in Lancashire? So I'm from a, a little village that many of you might not have heard of called Salford. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, right. it, it is a definite city different to Manchester. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> is that one that features in the Smiths video, right? the Salford Boys Club? It is, yeah, that's oh, the one. Yeah. You know, dragged up yeah. to the Smiths, to... Uh, you know, all the bands of the, the Man yeah, Oasis yeah, and things. Mm. Great. Yeah, but yeah, so grew up in Salford, um, great place. W wasn't that posh at the time? Right. Yeah, the BBC hadn't realised it was a cheap place to be at that point. <laughs> um, of course, the BBC's there, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's quite posh now. And it was the yeah. days when um, the docks were still working and you didn't go to the docks because it was yeah. really rough. Now you want right. to be in the docks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah. yeah, so from there, um, went to school there, a place called Moorside High School, which okay. was nowhere near a moor. It was right, right next to a main road. <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> yeah, okay. with lots of people. And then studied there all my life, went to college there. And then prior to ministry, you had jobs like working for Salford Youth Service and right, uh, okay. being involved with various things. And I was even a secret. I was on a mountain rescue team. Wow. That's okay. up that way. Mm. How many mountains in Bolton? We yeah. rescued them. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a St. Bernard? Uh, no, but the whiskey was good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. So that's great. So as we just thinking about uh, way back when, um, you talked about going to school. We have a question for you. And our question, of course, is... What were you like at school? Were you a little bit geeky? Or were you a little bit freaky? Or were you a little bit cheeky? What were you like at school? Yes, Mike, what were you like? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I sat listening to that thinking, which one of you is that singing it? <laughs> that was brilliant. What was I like at school? What were you like I, at I school? I was definitely a bit geeky. Right, oh, okay. I wasn't an intelligent geeky, because I'm not that clever, to be honest. Right. Like, what you see is what you get. Uh, but yeah. I was involved in things. I like volunteering mm. and like doing yeah. stuff and just helping people out. Okay. Um, and what made me laugh at school, I was not sporty at all did everything to avoid sport and i was laughing a few years back there i was you know at 40 running a 10k run each day for work 
And I thought, <laughs> how the world has changed. So, I, yeah, I was a bit geeky, into all sorts of things, would volunteer mm. and help out, and that made me probably a bit sad, really. Um, <laughs> Sounds very worthy, yeah, yeah, it's, in a good it's way. Yeah, in good stead. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it was all right. And how was the family? Was it sort of family unit like? Family was great. Um, you know, very posh, of course. So my dad worked in a factory. Nice. Um, yeah. In a place called Chloride Batteries, in a, a place up there called Death Valley. And uh, my mum worked as a bookkeeper. And latterly, she got a dream job before she retired in a haberdashery. Oh, God. Oh. Do never Sorry. ask me to spell it, because I have no idea. And, and my dad, when he was... Um, when he was about 40, 45, my age, he was made redundant from the factory and then mm. started working as a hospital porter, which he said was the best job he's ever done. Right. Yeah. Because just being around people yeah. and chatting to people. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a really good childhood. And, you know, those lavish holidays that you had as the kids mm. in the eight where mm. you went abroad, which was to Yorkshire. Or, um, <laughs> you know, or you went, you went really abroad, you went to Wales. And it was, you know, and I remember my parents having a, an old Morris Marina. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so the first one they had was a white one. The second one they had was a certain shade of brown. Mm. I'm yep. not going to use the word that it would describe no, it no. but it was a certain yeah. shade of brown yep. quite unique morris marina brown yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, and then i remember coming back from a holiday in north wales because my great aunt had a caravan park we went over a speed bump at the caravan park and the bottom of the car fell off <laughs> <laughs> it all sounds great fun sounds was, like there were lots of lots of stuff going on and, and actually on that note we have another question for you as you look back over that time and the question now is <laughs> What's your fondest childhood memory? What's your fondest, what's your fondest of all your childhood memories? What's your fondest, what's your fondest? Oh, <laughs> oh that's brilliant. Yes. That's Mike, awesome. what's your fondest oh, childhood memory? It's really hard, isn't it? Because yeah. there's so many. But mm -hmm. one that always makes me smile, mm -hmm. always makes me smile, is Christmas Day. Just this image of not the meal, not what you had, but myself and my, my nana doing the dishes. Right. I, I don't know why, there was something about standing in the kitchen next, drying the dishes as she washed. I don't know what that was about, yeah. but it just triggers yeah. off really happy memories. And memories, there's, there's a candle um, that I got, I think from Sainsbury's sell it, and I can't remember, amber and patchouli or something's the right. smell. And just that smell takes mm. me back there, because mm. it must be yeah. a similar smell to the perfume my nana used to have or something, right. yeah. which is just, Surreal, That's how the, yeah. the brain yeah. works. Yes, yeah, it's they do say that smell is the most evocative yeah. of senses yeah. or something, don't they? They do. I find there's um, the smell of poplar trees as well. Right. Because my grandparents used to have a caravan and there was a big row of poplars there. And as soon as I smell that smell of poplar, I go. Takes right. Straight wow. back yeah. there. It's just amazing how the brain it, works. It's very powerful, isn't it? My, yeah. I have a problem with lavender because I had a dentist Ooh. who wasn't very popular in my life. Um, to whom I used to have to go quite regularly, and he always had lavender in his hallway. So I can't smell, can't lavender, smell lavender without getting oh, this tinge yeah, of yeah. getting uh, getting gassed to have some <laughs> dental treatment. Just what they used to do in those days. They did, yeah. Yeah, I wrote, yeah. yeah you'd quite be sat there and you'd see this big black mask coming that's towards right. you. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. So you finished up with the, the childhood thing, and then you yeah. mentioned working in youth and that sort yeah, of thing. So yeah, so I ended up working um, for Salford um, City Council, okay. uh, volunteering, doing some youth work. Mm -hmm. um, I then, I'm trying, you know, when your brain starts thinking, you're going, what happened when? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I ended up, when I left college, I went to work at the National Youth Centre the, with the United Reformed Church. Okay. And so were you a, a churchy person Not back particularly, then? no. Right, my parents okay. didn't go to church. Yeah. Went to Cubs and thought, you know, if yeah. I'm saying to the Cubs, I'd want you to come to, to church, I'd better yeah. go. So I started yeah. going and okay. just quite enjoyed it. And yeah. I realised I had a real affinity with tea and cake. So <laughs> that, yeah. that kind of sold yeah. it to me. You know, yeah. you go and visit somebody and they give you a biscuit and a cup nice. of tea. What can be better? You know, yeah. getting paid to do that. But yeah, so I, um, when I left college, I went to work for the National Youth uh, Centre of the denomination that's now closed. Um, really loved that. Spent some time, uh, took some time out during that and went sailing. Mm -hmm. uh, sailed from Southampton to the Canaries. And then, oh, as you do. Yeah, as you do, just for the fun of it. Yeah. And when I came back, I then worked for PGL Adventure for several months right. teaching yeah. outdoor yeah. activities. Yeah. What's that? Uh, okay, that's an yes. outward bound type outward thing. Outward bound type thing. Right. And then came back from that and had to get a proper job and yeah. ended up at working at Midland Bank for a bit. Oh, nice. Oh, um, gosh, yeah. Do you yeah. remember the stories in the, the 90s of the bank centre in Manchester that got robbed from about £16 million? Pounds? Right. Yeah, that's where I worked. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was nothing oh, no. to do with me. Oh, nothing to do with me. And it was Nat West's money, not ours, yeah, so it was okay. great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, worked there and then started training yeah. for ministry. But it was yeah. I remember on the, the week before I was leaving the bank, they sat, I sat down and they said, Mike, are you really sure you want to leave? Oh, you know, why? And they said, well, we'd like to offer you management training. Yeah. And I said, okay, how much are you going to pay? Offering it. Yeah. Oh, 22,000 a year plus a company car, which was yeah. quite a yeah. good yeah. amount of money. And I said, and they said, what do you think? And I said, oh, 
honest opinion. They, oh, absolutely. I said, I'd be really bored. And I left two weeks later and then the start of my ministry training mm. went to Bangladesh for six months okay. in uh, 98, which was, was it 98? Yeah, 98. As which part was of fabulous. the training? Or just, yeah, yeah, they said, because mm -hmm. I was only young and the URC didn't like people starting training until they were 21. So I said, they said, go to uni. I said, what's the point? I want to do yeah. a theology degree. You might as well pay for it rather than me. <laughs> um, so they went, just go and get some life experience. Okay. And they said, oh, it'd be good if you went overseas. Mm. And when I was at the National Youth Centre, I met this group from Bangladesh and said, oh, I'd come one day to see what it was like. And I quite like keeping promises. So the denomination mm. sent me to Bangladesh for six months to work with the Church of Bangladesh, to live in the slum areas of, of uh, Dhaka, working for the bishop. No, I had an amazing time. What an experience. And yeah. still keeping yeah. touch with some of the people. And one of the guys that was there training for ministry, he's now one of the bishops. And the chap who was teaching on the ministry course, who was the principal, is still a very good friend. And uh, he was there for our wedding and they, they're in the Netherlands. And we just, it's a small world now. Yeah, all the time. it's yeah. good, so isn't it's it? wonderful. So just to rewind briefly, so you went in quite a short period of time from being not really a churchy person to yeah. being a training, to be a minister. Yeah, so it was, I was about 15 when I started going to church regularly. And uh, my parents had always encouraged us to go um, and do things. So when I was very small, I was um, christened, as they said, mm. uh, properly in the ch local church of England called the Church of the Holy Rood. I've not worked oh. out what the Holy Rood is yet, yeah. but it wasn't what I thought it was. Yeah. Um, but didn't like the place. It was quite austere. So my parents took us along. My mum took me along to the local URC. Yeah. And we quite liked it. And we went to toddler groups there and then Sunday school. And we did that till we were about 11 just went along because that's what you did. I then kind of drifted. Yeah, yeah, um, sounds was, familiar, yeah. Yeah, was involved with Cubs there and then Scouts wasn't quite for me. You know, it was a group of kids that were a bit rough. Um, and so I just came out of that, started helping at the Cubs. And that's then when I started yeah. going back regularly mm. and really quite enjoyed it. And I remember a wonderful old lady called Betty, who's now long gone, who just said to me one day, she said, Mike, have you thought about ever considering training for ministry? Yeah. My, and my answer was... <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so daft. No, 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 not doing that. So strangely enough, I became an elder at 18 right. <laughs> um, and then dismissed it again. Mm. Went away working at the National Youth Centre, mm. did selection conference, was accepted for training. Mm. And then when I came back from that, then went to PGL, I thought, I don't, I, I really don't want to do this. What should I do instead? I don't know what I'll do. And then came back from that because I had four months of not going to church, mm. um, came back and went to church and thought, this is exactly where I need to be. So well, that was it. Okay. And that was it. Yeah, yeah, I was convinced mm. that that is where God wanted me. Well, okay. And the Bangladesh thing really convinced it. And I think if anyone who who is ordained ever says, you don't have moments where you go, am I doing the right thing? They'd be lying. Because there's certainly moments in your faith where you go, what the heck? And I had that all the way through my life. And certainly, you know, in Bangladesh, I remember being involved. There was a huge riot that and got, uh, surrounded the compound and I was there and I just remember it was one of those moments where you realize the power of God and praying you know Lord if you exist help us there's no way of getting out of this without you five minutes later there's the biggest bang thunder lightning real torrential <laughs> tropical downpour and the crowd just went I ain't getting wet and off they went <laughs> and it was one of those moments where you go if I need any more proof there it is yeah. you know and it's and I found that throughout life where God says yeah, stop doubting, just believe. <laughs> <laughs> so were you tempted to stay there? But, but long Very long. much so. Yeah. I was uh, offered a job out there mm. with um, an in Dhaka International Christian Church to do youth work with them. So I went one day a week, one evening a week doing some stuff and they were trying desperately to talk me into staying. But I came back in the June and then was due to start training for ministry in the September. And I said, you know, it's just not right. Mm. I want to, ministry is where I want to go. Yeah. But you do get these temptations, don't you? And that's yeah. throughout life. You kind of think, do I go that way? Nah. Yeah. But what you did do is go and you obviously did your, your training. Yeah, so did I did some sort of theology. Yeah, so I did theological something. training in a Luther King House in Manchester. Right. Great group of people. So training alongside those of different denominations and traditions mm. was brilliant. Yeah. And then in the last couple of years, you then had separate things on being a reformed minister. You know, what made you unique? And that was quite powerful okay um, what what does make you unique that's an interesting question well, that's yeah. a really good question um it's about the belief in um you put me on the spot <laughs> 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 it's for me what makes the urc unique is is the structure and the fact that it's bottom up rather than top down yeah mm -hmm. okay. and that is very much it's mm. it's rooted in the scripture it's rooted in um you know by god alone by faith alone and that makes a big difference mm -hmm. but i only really understood what it meant to be a united reform church minister when I joined the army, when I was mm. then having to say to Anglican colleagues, I'm URC because, because when you're in a local church, you're not having to defend why you 
the you believe the denomination you believe in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I love it. I love the fact that in the United Reformed Church, we all get paid the same, and there's something special about that. Yeah, no, that, that's good. Makes it really fun. So, so you finished your training, and then you yeah, I went, went, joined a church, did you? Yeah, I went to the Bolton West Pastorate in Horwich in Lancashire. Right. Okay. Looked after three lovely churches. One was a, a URC Methodist, one a URC Anglican, right. and then the other just a pure URC. Um, so how does that work? Because I noticed, because where we are here, for example, yeah. you know, where it says, who who are we on yeah. your website, and it's kind of it's got you, but it's got the Methodist minister as yeah. well. So, so it, we're a URC Methodist church here as well. So yeah. in the 90s, LEPs, Local Ecumenical mm. Partnerships, were very popular. And some of them were formed to preserve the name of a church. And some mm. were formed because they said, actually, we've got these two churches in a town that believe very similar things. As two denominations, let's come together as one mm. and do together and do greater things together. Yeah, yeah. And that's how it came what about. What a radical idea. Yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> What's yes. right? But it, it does make it interesting. So it's having that foot in lots of different ecumenical camps mm, mm. it's not so yeah i was there for three and a half years okay. met my wife while i was there oh, nice um mm. and uh yeah got, got married and then we left to join the army all right let's do so what, that, uh, yeah. yeah what but, triggered that but, uh, well, well so, I was, to sorry, so, yeah. so to speak <laughs> sorry so to speak sorry yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wasn't even deliberate, wasn't even deliberate no. yeah wasn't. so what i liked when i was there mm. i did as i say earlier on i did mountain rescue for 12 years so i joined a mountain rescue team at 17 and did that right. whilst doing all these other bits okay. and um I love the camaraderie, the being out there. Mm. I always felt as though God was saying to me, you need to be in the services. Okay. It was something yeah. that I always felt an affinity yeah. to. And I think if I'd not been ordained, I'd have gone to the armed forces somehow. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I had this theory, you know, never join it. Why would, we, why would you ever want to join the army? That's really rough. That's just rubbish. I wanted to join the Navy. And I thought, I'll go into the Navy as a chaplain. That's what I wanted to do. Then realised that actually, if I do that, I'll be away for six months at least every year and won't Mm. get to see family. And I was an air cadet chaplain at the time as well. And I thought, I could join the Air Force. Then realised that's just the the other way, that you don't go away with the staff. You just stay and wait for them to come back. I thought, I'll try the Army. So I went on a quain and it just was right. My training was, you know, I did um, four weeks Vickers and Tarts course, as they call it, at Sandhurst, <laughs> which is right. now 10 weeks long. Right. <laughs> and I was, you know, I joined in the, the February and I was deployed to Afghanistan in just after the oh. Easter. Oh, not yeah. Afghanistan, sorry, Iraq. So yeah. I was straight in at the deep end. And, you know, so, so I joined the army. She was pregnant with our eldest and um, we moved to Germany. And then I was deployed to Iraq. <laughs> so slightly stressful, yeah. mm. but it worked. Yeah. I was looking after the uh, the engineer regiment, the bomb disposal guys, um, oh, and things yeah. like that in yeah. after, in Iraq. And yeah. I remember getting there, and you just get to you get posted. You go to a base, and you're thinking, right, I'm new to the army. Got all these exciting yeah. things, and you think, yeah. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then got deployed to, and I remember doing one lesson on tactical recognition, so you could identify whether it's a friendly tank or an enemy tank mm-hmm. and i said to the guy mm-hmm. jace who was teaching i went if i have to recognize an enemy tank he went oh it's gone really wrong part <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know yeah. and um and i just remember it just being quite surreal mm-hmm. getting to know the the soldiers getting to know what they do and one of the my favorite questions was so what do you do even if you know what they do it was asking what you do and mm-hmm just spending time with them. One of the highlights for me was, you've probably seen it on the news, the Basra Memorial Wall that's now at the National Marie Memorial Arboretum. I was involved in building that yeah. in Basra yeah. and yeah. helping the engineers do it. And I remember at about 10 o'clock at night, they'd got several layers up, looked at it, and went, the angle's wrong. <laughs> so they had to take it down and do it again, at which yeah. point I went, I'm going to get you all pizza <laughs> and yeah. brought stuff back. And we were there all night and yeah. I couldn't lay bricks for toffee, but what I could do with the bricks that they'd already laid is chip the cement off you know, sit and do that, talking to them. And, and that's what you do as yeah, a Padre. You're just it. there with yeah. them. Um, and it was just a totally different and unique experience. And to be with those that are going through the same thing. I was separated from family. My son was born during my uh, R&R, my rest and relief week. And then I flew back to Iraq. Yeah. Mm. Highly recommended if you've got a new baby. <laughs> it's like a lot easier. Um, so anyway, it's getting his sleep. Yeah. yeah, so flew back to Iraq. And we were certainly... In 2006 in Iraq on Optelic 8, we had lots of incoming fire every day. Oh, we were being mortared daily. Yeah. We were being, things were happening all the time. I lost track of how many deaths we dealt with. Yeah. On the yeah. tour we had 26 operational deaths, lots of casualties. And it takes its toll. And sadly yeah. on the last day of the tour, I was injured as well. So I got, um, 
<laughs> it's terrible. I packed my kit. It's quite funny when you look on it now. Yeah, so that sounds hilarious. <laughs> so, so, so I packed my kit, and there was this thing <laughs> kicking off in Basra. So you could see Basra mm. City from where we were. And I'm stood there looking at it thinking, oh, that's really quite pretty, because, you know, rockets and things have trails, and it just looked like... Mm fireworks but the bang was a bit more serious and uh, <laughs> and looking then i saw not too far away this really bright flash and a rude word went through my mind well several rude words mm. went through my mind because i realized that was a ba pl base plate of a mortar firing oh. that was probably coming in this direction yeah. and it was and um i managed to get into shelter but the blast knocked me off my feet and i broke my shoulder Oof. so i ended up um i was meant to fly out the next day <laughs> ended up in um iraq for another week and several years later, I met a bloke who went, oh, Padre, I'm so glad I saw you. One, he said, I thought you died. And I went, oh, gee, thanks. And he said, and two, thank you so much. I got your seat on the plane. So I went over three days early. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I then spent, you know, got medivac back to Birmingham and spent oh, two right. months in mm. Sally Oak Hospital getting fixed. Even mm. now, I, well, you've sat here and seen me drop my tea three times. It's that right arm that yeah. is just, uh, right, it's yeah, just yeah. funny now. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I came back from that and spent another two years in Germany. Then from Germany went to be chaplain to Abingdon, a logistics unit. Uh, then came to Purbright to work at the oh, Army mm -hmm. Training Centre at Purbright, which again was fabulous and just had a, a, fa a great time. Met loads of the people that joined the Army, who I then met down the line. And then was posted back to Germany with the family, back to Paderborn, to be chaplain mm. to 5th Battalion of the Rifles, who at the time were the biggest battalion in the British Army of 770 wow. soldiers. Yeah. Um, with a fabulous CO who's now a general and we just had a great time there was everyone was there and you'd wander around families and sit and have a chat and you know you get the mickey taken out of you by wives just as much as you would by the soldiers mm -hmm. and we had a wonderful time and then I deployed with them to Afghanistan for six months and was the last army chaplain in Camp Bastion Oh, okay. which was mm. really interesting to do and I preached at the the service at Paderborn Cathedral when it was the final battle group deployment to Afghanistan had happened and there's nothing to focus the mind more than when you know you're preaching and the BBC and Sky are filming <laughs> and if you say something wrong it could not uh, don't mm. worry about your career but it was downfall of empires time yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, you, yeah. you have to check every and it's the only time I've ever scripted a full sermon right. um, but Afghanistan was totally different to Iraq because mm. we're in Bastion that a lot of the nastiness had stopped my unit were going out doing patrolling and safety and things i was looking after some of the air force guys as well a real mix a real buzz but my job was to look after the force protection troops so we had um, 26 guard towers around the camp bastion and do you remember the news that camp bastion was the size of reading i have to say mm. it was it was huge yeah, yeah. but it was less traffic than reading <laughs> and so twice a week i'd go around every single guard tower and visit people there and it, yeah. it was they just some of the they were so grateful to see you and they said oh we know it's Wednesday because you've come Padre just sit and it might be a five minute snippet of a conversation but I have to say 26 cups of tea in a day <laughs> takes its yeah. toll on your bladder yeah it was mm. great time so you're, you're dealing with a big flock so to speak aren't yeah. you in those environments a lot of it's just you kind of yeah the and Padre it, and with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of absolutely. people and their families when you're back at and you but. but you get to know them it's about relationship mm. yeah mm. everything in ministry is about relationship and once you have that relationship you can talk about god once you've got to know soldiers and the families you can say yeah. actually i know life's tough have you tried praying well actually padre i think that might help and the most tactile people i've ever met are soldiers mm -hmm. because when it hits the fan and you're hurting why not give each other a hug why mm. not actually give each other permission to cry i remember sitting down with one of the office commandings one of the things with him and his sergeant major and he said to me about three o'clock in the morning when will it end but the highlight of the whole thing, I managed to achieve one compassionate, which was, I got a message saying, oh, soldier such and such, she's got to go home, Padre. Okay, I'll go and get him. Went and got him. So it was quite often me driving to the guard tower, grabbing the guy, um, taking him to the plane. Drove onto the runway at Camp Bastion to a Herc that had just landed with the, the propellers still mm. going. Put him on it, off he went. And uh, I said, oh, it was great to have the Herc. Oh, yeah, Padre. It turned round over um, the Gulf and came back just for him. Oh, really? <laughs> and, so I'd managed to achieve a plane turning round. Wow, look at that. <laughs> which was yeah. quite impressive. But he got yeah. home to see his um, relative who was ill just in time. And it's just having that level of relationship. Mm. And, and that's something I've brought back with me to ministry. So... I went into the army having been ordained three and a half years. I came out having been ordained a lot longer and having grown churches and you know, with an army context with that, that younger generation in church that we're missing in mainstream churches, but discovered the greatest thing that they don't teach at theological colleges. Anything is possible 
through um, dedication to prayer and building up relationships. And that's how we've seen growth here at High Cross. It's not by any secret formula or any deep theological training. It's simply by getting to know people. And so, I mean, it's some pretty... Sorry, that's quite deep. No, yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. Yeah. I mean, it's a, what a rich mm. and extreme experience, really. Oh, it's it? just... Yeah. I, situation. I, one of the things is people say, would you go back a bit? And I keep going, no, I've done that. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> but yeah. you get to a stage in life where God mm. says you need to do something else and for me that moment was um at salisbury cathedral we're on a, a spring school with a denomination of local you know the local urc ministers from across the south and i sat there and i suddenly realized actually god's saying to me you need to go back the hardest bit for me leaving was the fact i was sadly medically retired so i was diagnosed with ptsd and yeah. so i was i had no choice i had to leave and that was hard getting mm. the treatment and the support you need to cope with that as well as a minister going I don't have my own house. What am I going to do? Where are we going to live? Where are the kids going to go to school? How do we work here? And I was so blessed by having a wonderful moderator, which is um, the next level up in the URC, who said to me, don't worry, do your profile, put it in. Then it, after looking at several profiles, High Cross came up. Okay, let's try that. Pushed to the door and it, you know, it swung, hit me up the back and threw me through it. And <laughs> it was the place to be. And the denomination have been so supportive, even with the you know, PTSD doesn't go. You, I take regular pills, they're quite nice. Um, and, <laughs> and it just keeps you on that level. But the denomination are very good and say, actually, don't do too much. If something gets too much, just pull back from it. But I love it because Cambly is an amazing community. Yeah, and yeah. it's a busy, I mean, it's all relative, yeah. obviously, but yeah. it's a busy place. This is oh, clearly a busy place. Isn't yeah, it? so High Cross was built in 1990 as a, a church at the heart of community. Mm -hmm. And we've adopted the slogan, slogan, a church at the heart of community. Mm -hmm. We have about one and a half thousand people a week come through the premises. Mm -hmm with groups, everything from baby and toddler groups, health visitors, dance groups, performing arts, University of the Third Age, you, know, you name it, it meets here. And then we have a cafe as well that's, when it was started, the ethos was that it was those from Portersbury School with special educational needs might not necessarily get employment elsewhere, would work in the cafe. And that ethos has carried on now for 32 years. Mm. So it's all very busy, clearly. It is, yeah. But, Sorry, uh, I love it. I'm passionate. I can talk <laughs> yes, for hours. Yeah. Which is great. infectious enthusiasm. Which, I mean, we realise when yeah. you're in a sort of vocational role yeah. such as this, it's, it's talking about spare time and that sort of thing. Hey, people generally <laughs> laugh, like you do. Um, yeah. But what do you, what do, you do oh, to relax? To... Yeah, it's a good one. Um, I used to, when I was first ordained, mountain rescue was my relaxation. I'd go out walking and yep. I still go walking from here. There's okay. some great walks around here. Um, but what I do love is I, there's a company here in Camberley called the Massage Company. Ah. Going for a regular massage is wonderful. Oh, right. And okay. it's not dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> I can see what you're thinking. No, no, no. no it's not dodgy, but I do yeah. that and I really do enjoy that. And I've just signed up to do something different as well because... You know when you sit on Facebook and you're doing bits and something pings up and there was an advert for the Red Cross and it came up a couple of times and they were looking for volunteers to support their emergency response. So mm. if there's a fire or something happens, their volunteers will go and provide some pastoral support and a cup of tea. So right. I volunteered to do that <laughs> and they said, oh, you know, with all your experience, you could do this and that. I just want mm. to take the vehicle to an incident, make whoever's not happy happier and then come home. And I just want that ground level stuff where actually I'm Mike, I'm not a minister, I'm just yeah. a volunteer. Painting a very powerful picture of someone who likes to get involved with people. Yeah, and I, yeah. when I was asked for the Red Cross thing, why do you want to volunteer? I said, it's just what I do. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> there's no there's nothing deeper than that yeah. it's just mm. i just enjoy Community doing stuff spirit, yeah. yeah yeah and of course yeah. you do a little it's not exactly a well, sort of a podcast isn't it it's yeah yes yeah. we do thing. we do a little um it started during lockdown or was it just before i can't remember but it's um a guy who became my community worker here and now has moved on called neil bray book tidy and we just started doing two blokes chatting and mm. um it, it got into a regular thing we do it every wednesday at 10 o'clock on facebook the facebook page is network for community and it's just grown and grown and grown. Yeah. This week, just gone, we talked about um, Burns Night. And uh, weirdly, this week, we've had over 3,000 views and a reach of 23,000. And, and it's and, very much about Camberley, is it? Or, uh, no, it's Surrey Heath. Yeah, Surrey Heath, okay. Surrey, right. Yeah. But, but most of it's just us talking rubbish most yeah. of the time. <laughs> well, it sounds like it's going yeah, very it's well. Yeah, it's great. So to give us the name again. Uh, Network for Community. Network for um, Community, right, okay. A chat with Neil and Mike or something. They're I can't right. remember what it's got. Yeah. yeah. I just turn up. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds sounds very good. Yeah, it sounds very good. Brilliant. Well, well done. Fantastic. Well, it's uh, that's been a, quite a, an exciting journey, hasn't it? But it's almost time for us to take a peek inside your imaginary oh, picnic, picnic basket. <laughs> 
uh, which means it must be time to talk about some of your favourite things. <laughs> Well, as you know, Mike, unlike the mind-boggling complexity of the rest of the show, this is a very simple little game. We give you a series of categories and you just have to tell us your favourite thing in that category. So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So, it's going to be really revealing. Yeah, the, um, the, <laughs> so first category, is, we also have the same thing as our first category, your favourite book of the Bible. Oh, it's got to be Philippians. Oh, okay. Oh, so we haven't had that, we haven't one, had that one before. Yeah, I love the that that epistles that. because it's the application of mm. faith. You know, and it's okay. it's how you relate, and churches are built. And Philippians mm. for me is one of the. Yeah, but I did write Ephesians down because they're a bit like that. Mm. But I do love Philippians. Yeah. Okay. So. Very nice. And if you had to go Old Testament, oh, Old Testament. Um, I, I quite like Ecclesiastes. I've always oh, liked that's Ecclesiastes. Quite no, we haven't yeah. had that one either. Yeah. 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 I love that Ecclesiastes three a time for you know the time for this and the time for that. Mm, all right, okay. for health. great, very good. Okay, Mike, Mike. Okay, your favourite trousers? Oh, walking ones. Walking what well, ones that just walk? Oh, okay. oh yeah, they oh, ones sorry, that, like, walk themselves. Great. I do. <laughs> you know, having the mountain rescue, I quite like a nice pair of walking trousers because they they kind of not formal, but you can get away with them a bit yeah, formal, okay. formally, okay. Yeah, and yeah. just and they're a bit loungy as well. All, so, all purpose yeah are they, yeah, they fleece lined these walking trousers? i've got a pair of fleece lined have you? Oh, and i had them yeah. on on friday because i went for a walk right. friday yeah. morning it was yeah. freezing yeah. they are nice then aren't yeah. they are they the ones you can take the zip zip around the oh top yeah you've got to have zip so it's the point of having walking trousers right. if you can't turn them into shorts you can turn them into shorts yeah, oh yeah. those ones yeah. Yeah. gotta have them yeah gotta you, have you got a pair like that you, your favorite ones are the ones with the the elasticated waist they your ones i have to have an elasticated waist yes you get to a certain age there we go. Sorry, That's, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's either elasticated no, waist or the expander button. <laughs> <laughs> so I've certainly got an expandable waist, but uh, <laughs> so I get trousers to match. Um, right. So uh, the third category uh, is uh, is also top five, and we've decided for this season two of the show that it's going to have the same category for each of our guests. Uh, so it's your favourite top five films. Oh no, you did warn me about this as well, <laughs> and it's one of those where you kind of go. There's just so many, but it's got to be. I was thinking about it. It's got to be yeah. Love Actually. I really okay. like it. It's quite oh, twee. Okay. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. There's another one that's kind of along the same genre called The Holiday. Yes. Which I quite like. Yes, I'm big fans of yeah, it. Yeah. We actually went. That was filmed in Sheer. Yeah, it was around here, wasn't and, it? Um, was it? Okay. Yeah, it's not far from where we're based. Yeah. And um, we actually went there one Sunday, I think it was in June. And all of a sudden, the whole village was covered in snow. Yeah, it's brilliant. And they'd been blowing all this oh, theatrical yeah. snow. Yeah. Every, but it looked amazing. You suddenly That's had this nice. snowy landscape in the middle of June. You managed to get yourself in the film. So, I'm sure there's a bloke that looks like you. No, they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't filming. He's still in the background. <laughs> yes. Hello. <laughs> so, um, and then the, the third one's one you've probably not seen. It's one with Rowan Atkinson. Hmm. Rowan Atkinson in called Keeping Mum. Oh, right. And it's oh, about a guy that, who's a vicar yeah. who goes to a village and all the people that are winding him up slowly disappear. And it turns out that his wife's mum, who they've not seen has turned up, is a, a murderer. Spoiler and alert. she's, yeah. she's um, filling up the village <laughs> pond with these bodies. Oh, it's no. absolutely brilliant. Actually, I haven't seen it. I thought oh, I had, it, I is seen it. it is worth okay. watching. It is worth watching. It is brilliant. Wow. And she also teaches him how to get humour into his sermons. Right. <laughs> <laughs> quite funny. Because I always think you've got to leave church smiling. Um, and then one, you know, it's got to be, um, uh, there's one, a Northern Irish film you've probably not seen called Mickey Bo and Me which right. is about oh. two lads across the cultural divide that become friends and find it really difficult to understand why they're not allowed to be friends. Right, okay. And it's yeah. really quite mm. powerful. It's called mm. Mickey Bow. Mick, Mickey Bow. Mickey, Mickey Bow, Bo. right. And me, okay. really powerful. Okay. And then yeah. last one's got to be something like, um, you know, a classic, something like Die Hard. Right. Oh. I, just, oh. yeah. I was thinking on the waterfront, <laughs> Die no. Hard. No, it's got to be something like Die Hard, you know, that great right. Christmas movie. That's a whole other okay. discussion. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's just, yeah. you know, the classic ones that you watch and go, oh, I've not seen that for ages, I'll sit and watch it. But there are so many online. Yeah, there are. Are there, are there any sort of, um, whatever the word is, you know, army-based films? No, I don't that, like army-based yeah, films. <laughs> I, I, find, I find the problem with things like that, it takes you to a place you don't want to be. Yes, yeah. and it's, um, I was imagining that might be Yeah, place, and yeah. especially with the PTSD. Yeah. We watched yeah. that show that's been on lately called The Responder on BBC One with um, Martin Freeman. I watched five minutes and I said to yeah. my wife, we can't yeah. watch that. Yeah. And she, she'd already clocked that I was getting quite uncomfortable. I turned it off. That's understandable. And it's just... It? It, it triggers things so yeah, the same with a lot of army films i can watch ones like the um you know the wild western things that's 
totally yeah. removed. But the more modern ones, you look at it and you just go, that's a load of rubbish. Or you go, oh, no, don't like the sound. Of, you know, it's certain sounds that set you off. Yeah, thing, yeah. So. Or like Carry On Sergeant. That's oh, that's so <laughs> that's, the Carry Ons are classics, though, aren't they? They are, not they? They are yeah. so wonderful. Yeah, they're brilliant. Yeah. We were talking on the way over about it, it ain't half hot bun. Well, we've got a guy that comes here, now you say that. Um, Hi, Rob, because I'm going to mention him. He lives across the road, Sergeant Major, and he's right. got the moustache. Oh, is he? Yeah, you know, the Windsor Davis moustache. Oh, yes. Yeah, and he looks like him, sounds like him. Did he come and in he... and go stand up to the shoulders? Yeah. Bloody boy. Hello, sir. <laughs> yeah, he's guardsman as well. <laughs> he's the nicest guy you could meet, but he is Windsor Davis all over. Yes. <laughs> we were we were discussing on the way over whether whether Simon King, his famous lovely boy, uh, I've got impression got him, got but in. he's gone in. You've got it in. You've got it in. Probably most inappropriate, what we were saying, but there we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> excellent. Well, that's a, that's yeah, a great range. Was that five? I think that was five, was it? It was five. Films, yeah. Five. I, I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> it was great, great range of films. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Okay, Mike, your favourite means of transport? Oh, you know, it depends what you're using the means of transport for, doesn't mm. it? Because there's the practical means and there's not so practical means. Mm. I absolutely love, and I've not done it for years, sailing. Because oh. just the peace of being out Good at sea. Mm. Um, and there's something really peaceful about being on a yacht without an end, you know, a, a sailing yeah, yeah, yacht and just yeah. that peacefulness. But yeah. practically, I've got an electric bike and I love that. Oh, oh my electric okay. pedal bike. So, okay. is it one of those where well, it looks like a bicycle, but you just go yeah. whizzing along yeah. without oh, yeah, mysteriously yeah. not yeah. You, you don't break sweat going uphill. <laughs> yeah. So, That's yeah, it's good choices. Very yeah. good. What's yours, Simon? Mine? Oh, um, my rally chopper. Yeah, I've still Choppers. got it. Yeah, yeah. you still got, got it. I've still got it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, it's just all sorts of. I mean, no, I, Ian, yeah. no, I don't know. I was just thinking. I've never been on a helicopter, so oh, that's something I yeah. ought to correct because yeah. I don't know why. I have, but bizarrely, and I forget. I have. I have been in a glider. I have but, flown a glider when that's I was peaceful, isn't it? Was, yeah. which was kind of weird, but uh, very yeah. silent. If you get a nice helicopter, it's nice because it doesn't smell. An army helicopter smells. Yeah, just <laughs> diesel and blokes. <laughs> it's quite grim. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so there we go. Anyway, our, our last category is uh, is always a multiple choice. Okay. And uh, you're part, obviously, of the United Reformed Church. Correct. Um, so we'd like to know your favourite reform. Now, because it's multiple choice, three possible answers. <laughs> the, uh, the 1832 Reform Act, the 16th century Reformation, or Reformed Ham. So the Reform Act, the Reformation, or Reformed Ham. It's going to sound awful, isn't it? But ham out of a tin cannot be beaten on a sandwich with a bit of pickle oh, in it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just in time for picnics. Yeah, yeah. 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 in that weird shape of tin as well, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Childhood yeah. memories in a tin. It's, um, <laughs> so Reformed Ham beats the Reformation. Yeah, it's definitely. not often you come across Reformed Ham and the Reformation in the same sort of context, no, really? is it really? But yeah. the Reformation was pretty good. Yes. I'll yeah. give them that, yeah. yeah. Really Just good. didn't quite do it. Uh, the, really. the Pod Reform Act was, uh, I don't even know what that did. It was something to do with politics, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 But uh, there we go. Well, I think yep. you get full marks for all those choices. Oh, as much. Oh, and good. that brings us to our new feature for this second series of the show. Right, yes, we believe in innovation, Mike. So we've uh, relieved you of the need to bring a packed lunch mm -hmm. and scaled it up a bit. So we can ask you... What would you pick in your perfect picnic if the picking were up to you? Would you be sticking in some finger licking chicken? Or would you be silly and pick pick a lily? Tell us what would you choose? Yes, what would you pick for your perfect picnic? J just before we open up the hamper, Mike, where would you go for your perfect <sighs> picnic? Uh, a perfect picnic has to be, you know, on a meadow next to a flowing stream. Ooh. Our river's quite nice. Any particular place in mind? I don't mind. Anywhere, as long as I'm with my wife. That would oh. be the great thing. So on the, on the, yeah. the banks of the Zambezi, perhaps. That, that would work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can't afford to go there, but yeah, that would work. <laughs> <laughs> no, anywhere, just, yeah. you know, I do like flowing water, you know, I, I think that really yeah. adds a level of relaxation. Does it not make you want to go to the loo, though? I'm like not that, that age yet. <laughs> oh, I, speaking for myself, yeah. Hands yeah. up, boys. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that sounds lovely. So in a lovely way, <laughs> I'm moving on because I need the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Deary me. It's, uh, it's shocking. So there we are. Sorry, sorry. And, uh, so we're in a lovely, sure. lovely meadow. We can hear the babbling yep. stream yep. next to us, yep. and we we get the we spread out the blanket. Yeah, no cow pats either. 
No so what? No cow no, I, oh, cow I dearly we've avoided the cow pants. Okay, good, yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a beautiful large hamper. We open it up. What would we find mm. inside your perfect pig? I'd probably find that the kids have nicked everything. <laughs> no, right, no, but, no. but in the perfect one, it's yeah. got to be, you've got to have a pork pie. Right. Yeah. It's yes. got to be a pork pie. I agree. Yeah. With piccalilli. Oh, oh, you are going to be silly and say yeah. piccalilli. I am going to be silly and say piccalilli, because yeah. I do love piccalilli. Right. Um, mm. And then... Um, yeah, if you're having a posh picnic, uh, you know, a bottle of fizz or something. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely, a wine. definitely posh. Yeah. Um, and then... <laughs> Any particular champagne you like? Uh, I just like Carver from Lidl. It's quite nice. <laughs> it's good. I'm really simple. I prefer it than the taste of champagne. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's quite nice. Um, but I always like Scotch egg as well. I think oh, Scotch yeah, eggs yes. are just so yeah. underrated. Yeah. You know, or a nice boiled egg. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. um, just a ham sandwich. Right. Um, mm. you Would know, you roll the ham? <laughs> no, it's a sandwich. You don't have rolled ham in a sandwich, do you? It's oh, just chucked in. Try yeah. telling that to our first guest, the yeah, Mark Potter, who fastidiously oh. rolled his ham. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, so, would you slice the scotch egg? Do you do it, have it sliced and then? Because yeah, you eat them whole, don't you? I would just yeah, in eat one. it whole. Yeah. Well, yeah. not not in one. <laughs> I've got a big mouth, but not that big. It's a good <laughs> challenge. It's a challenge. It's a picnic challenge. It is. You probably is. have to hold your nose open. You would have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, it but yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I don't. I never plan picnics. It's just grabbing whatever is in the cupboard, yeah. and that sometimes makes the most randomly interesting picnics because mm. yeah. you've got to have yeah. a few pickles in there as well. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, when it comes to salad content of a picnic, mm. you know, your brain yeah. says, "Oh, you've got to have something salady to be mm. healthy." It's just nice, and you've got to have a bit of nice bit of cake. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. Any particular what type of cake? Oh, I'm. I'm a minister. I just like cake. Just any. Cake. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I do. I oh, flatjack's quite nice because that's easy oh, for okay. a picnic. Yeah. Yeah. Or brownie or something but something you made right. yourself oh, um, right. yeah. but I did have a lovely piece of Victoria uh, mm. uh, Victoria Victoria sponge thank Victoria you sponge. that wasn't coming then I don't know where that <laughs> happened that. And I do like scones right you yeah. can't beat a scone mm. so we've, yeah. we've had we've had a, a few conversation scones about yeah. scones oh, yeah. oh scones are good yeah. And yes. I, you know, I don't care whether the cream's top bottom or whatever, as long as it's got cream and jam. Oh, okay, it. right. It okay, doesn't last long enough for that. Yeah, no, I'm from I, Lancashire. I agree. I'm practical. We, we, <laughs> we went down a particular cream yeah, and jam did, rabbit we? hole on a previous yeah, show, didn't yeah, we? So yeah. I'll, I'll choose not to go. It went on for some time. I seem to remember. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds that sounds great. Brilliant. I think. Yeah, very yeah. good. And it all sounds rather idyllic. It, yeah, that's the key part. It's company, isn't it? Yes. And the location make it. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. I'm rather enjoying the idea of these delicious picnic yeah, buffets. Yeah, working out the only downside way. is it makes you, your mouth water as you're talking about it. <laughs> it does, yes. Yeah. But back to the Mike Thomason journey. We've <laughs> talked about the back then and the now, but let's have a look into the future. Yes. Ooh. Mike, what would you like us to be talking about if we were doing this show 12 years from now? 12 years. So what does that make it? That makes it 2034. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, if we believe the films, we'll all be around on floaty cars, won't we? And groovy things yeah, like that. Yeah, but that true. wasn't that meant to be 2002 or something. Yeah, that's 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 all, yeah. Um, yeah. What would we be talking about? I'd hope we're talking about how we're really struggling to cope as a church with the amount of people we support right. okay. and yeah. the, the people that are coming on a Sunday. I'd hope that we're, we're having more conversations about God and faith in everyday life. From a personal perspective, I hope God still wants me to be here because mm. I really enjoy mm. being here in Camberley mm. Mm. and that's special but to be able to say we've done all these amazing things we've reached out to community but we brought people to faith but not in a way that's just superficial we've brought them to faith because they want to be there and they want to be involved in something that's amazing and mm. to know mm. a God that loves them and that's that would be what I'd love to be talking that about in 12 nice. years very good very and, good. Uh, and of course you we'd be talking about how your uh your Facebook thing had uh, just passed the two million mark. <laughs> well, well, I might be an international yeah. celebrity by yeah. that time, so we, we won't be talking at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, um, we wouldn't get in your yeah, diary. Yeah, we yeah. might get to 150 by then. Yeah, <laughs> 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 might get to double figures. <laughs> but uh, well, we wish you every blessing, Mike. Wherever. Um, yeah, we'll life, see you in season 14. <laughs> Um, but back in the present, I'm pleased to say we've reached the rather more cerebral and indeed spiritual part of the show. Yes, and we start by asking for the benefit of a wisdom in addressing another thorny Bible-based bone of contention. That's easy for me to say. <laughs> and we call this part of the show... Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Yes, is it true? And most appropriately at this rather chilly time of year, we have recently stumbled across some meteorological research which suggests that there was a series of very harsh winters in the Middle East in the early part of the first century. Interesting. And some eminent scholars have deduced that when we read of Jesus walking on water, this was actually because the lake they were on was completely frozen. 
and he was simply walking on the ice. So, Reverend Mike Thomason. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Yes, is it true? Do you think that's true? <laughs> Well, it said, it said so on the internet, didn't it? Yeah. 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 Do you know what? What a wonderful thing if it was. Yeah, let's say it's true. Yeah. Yeah, because it's really cold at the moment, isn't it, in the Middle yeah. East? They've got snow in Athens and Turkey, right. okay. so yeah. Yeah, it's go. possible. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, let's go with it. Yeah, yeah. it's true. Because Peter tried, and at least one of the Gospels, anyway, talks about Peter trying. Yeah. And he, he, but he got a little bit. He got a little bit. And then, then he must have fallen through the yeah. ice, he presumably. Just, like, obviously fell through, yeah. I mean, the other yeah. thing that occurred to me it was that cause it was very stormy. It talks yeah. about it, very windy. And it does actually talk, to be fair, the Bible does actually talk, mention waves. So, it does. You know, that's and that's when that was Peter was getting out. And I must admit, having done a lot of sailing, there's no way I'd be getting off a solid boat if it's a bit windy. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a bit. But the other thing that occurred to me, rather than walking on ice, um, Jesus could have been water skiing. And because it was so yeah. windy, you know, he could have had a sail sailing craft, and but the, the disciples in, in their panic would have just not noticed the boat. So he could have been whizzing along on water skis. So. There's that, or he could have been on one of those ones, you know, where you do the water skiing without the boat, you just attach to a cable on the other side. Oh, winding really, really, really quickly. Yeah, yeah. It would have yeah, to be a rope, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a very yeah. long rope yeah. to reach yeah. Yeah. across wow. the entire Sea of Galilee. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think of water skiing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure they could water ski, because you would have to have a very fast <laughs> boat, wouldn't you? But you could have, so either a sailing boat, mm. or it could have been, given the time it was, one of those big Roman galleons that or, you see in, like... Um, Ben Hur, yeah. you know, and they yeah. get, and I'd like, I, I think it's my favourite scene, film, by the way. I, could yeah, I know, I think of the scene in Ben mm -hmm. Hur when you see all the slaves down there, and you've got the bloke at the front, haven't you, with the drum, boom, 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 and he's going yeah. cruising speed, boom, boom. And Great job, a, isn't it? Dude? Yeah, attack yeah. speed, boom, 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 boom. And then there's yeah. ram speed, boom, boom. and I'd like to think there was another speed, water ski speed. Yeah. Some water. Anyway, so, so uh, yeah. or yeah. alternatively, Jesus could have been walking on water, yeah. I suppose. So, oh, that's, yeah. yeah. So I, mean, <laughs> I think we're not. So it might be, might be a grain of truth in that one. That would be the first. Possibly. Yeah, it's possibly, 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 possibly. Possibly. But probably not. But there's, not. but there's all sorts of theories out there, isn't there, that mm. people try and explain everything away in the Bible, actually just revel in the mystery yes. and the miracle. Yeah. Isn't that the great yeah. thing? Jesus walked on water. Does it matter whether the lake was frozen or not? It's the fact that he walked on water and that's what people saw, mm. the miracle of it, and that's what's powerful. And the image that comes around it of having the faith to do that. It's yes. just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we shall, we shall see. You're, yeah. you're quite right. There's, there's so much stuff. But having why... walked on ice, I wouldn't like to do it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> terrifying thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, um, yeah. Anyway, but with that, Mike, perhaps you would bless us with your spiritual oh. pearl of wisdom. It's a spiritual pearl of So I spent a long time thinking about this and there's so many bits you could say, but one of the things I've learned over my ministry and especially my time in the army is there's one thing that faith comes down to. And as a minister, it's what it comes down to. And that's loving one another. And I remember conversations with those who've served and all over the place where people have said to me, Padre, you're not going to like me because. And I said, I don't know where you get that impression from. I love you because God calls me to love you. There might be things you do I don't like, but I'm called to love you. And you then start building the relationship to explore faith, to explore what's going on, and to support people in what's going on in life. And that is the simple philosophy I have in life, which is love one another. No sub clauses, no get out of jail free cards, but love one another, full stop, regardless of what the individual is or what they've done love one another and that is powerful and that's something that i preach on a regular basis that's something that i preach through my actions as well as my words and through that you build the most amazing relationships and it's one of those regrets of the english language that we don't have the words sometimes to express the type of love i'm talking about but i think you can grasp what it is it's just caring and loving each other and that makes a huge huge difference and what then underpins that is my faith and beliefs and everything we find in scripture because i believe that's what god calls us to do above all things and that's what we're working hard at as a church here in cambly to ensure that the love of god is available to everyone come what may it's a spiritual of wisdom. Well, 
thank you very much <laughs> thank for you. that, Mike. And that brief glimpse at the sensible brings us to the somewhat <laughs> less sensible feature with which we close the show. And that is... Simon's Random Question. Simon, what's your random question for Mike? Well, Mike, as we all know, various faddish diets are all of the rage at the moment right now. But we'd like you to imagine that for the next month, you're only allowed to eat sliced white bread, okay? That might sound bad enough, but each and every slice must be covered with a generous amount of only one type of spread. And the spreads available to choose from are raspberry jam, Philadelphia cheese, beef dripping, marmite, or lemon curd. So my random question for you, Mike, is, which spread would you like on your bread? That is the easiest question going. Oh, oh really? It's dead easy. Oh, yeah. Because my daughter this week at school made this spread and it was delicious. Came home and made another four jars. And Ooh. I just love it and could eat it with a spoon out the jar. And that's lemon curd. Oh, it's really? It's got to be curd. lemon curd. How bizarre is that? I know. Yeah. And I just, I must admit, I do adore lemon curd and it proper homemade stuff's great. Mm. Okay, brilliant. that's interesting. So you, so you were sort of rather desperate for most of that question, and then lemon curd appeared was, out of nowhere. I was, as, <laughs> as, soon as, as, see you, as, you, as soon as you said, "What would you spread on the white bread?" I thought lemon curd, it's, and it so, came up, and oh, it came up. So, that, that's it was the uncanny. last one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, the it was the Lord is at work among yeah, us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Before that, I was on the Philadelphia. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think. I mean, if it was like three times a day, sliced yeah, white bread covered in lashings of, be quite. Even lemon curd, you might get a bit bored of it after a month, yeah. I think. I think you get bored yeah. of anything after a month, yeah, to be honest. I think it was, I can't it's probably the healthiest, isn't it, out of all those? I mean, I'm not know, sure. It's quite a bit of vitamin C, you wouldn't get scurvy, would you? You, you wouldn't get scurvy, but you, yeah, you get a real tingle every time you had it, because it's got that, that <laughs> yeah. you know, the citrus in it. But, yeah, yeah a good raspberry jam's good, though, no, but, no, it's got to yeah. be lemon curd. Yeah. It's got to be yeah. lemon curd. Yeah, yeah, raspberry jam would be a bit... Um, yeah. Beef yeah. dripping would be a bit much. Oh, yeah, that would be... Yeah. <laughs> What you could do is, is a celebration of the final day of your spread on sliced white bread feast. You could have all of this, all of the spreads at the same time, couldn't you, on top of all each of other. The above. Well, that's what happens after you've eaten it. So, yes, what's the yeah. issue? Yeah, that would be yeah. quite. That would yeah. be particularly <laughs> unpleasant. <doesn't it? laughs> I'm glad you weren't going to suggest we try it. But, yeah. Well, funny you should funny say, you say that, that. Because <laughs> you wondered why well, we, we had this carry about. <laughs> Yes. Well, Simon, I'm not sure that your newfangled one-spread yeah. diet will catch on. But in any case, that was... Simon's Random Question. Well, Mike, you'll no doubt be relieved to know that that means we've got to the end of the show. Thank you very much for being with us. A real pleasure. Thank you. It's been great fun. <laughs> And, dear listeners, thank you for tuning in. Remember, you can keep in touch with us through Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you can. Over the next few weeks, we'll be taking our pew to the heart of Hampshire, the east end of London, as well as West Sussex. Our first international <laughs> trip, Simon, as we go mm. to South Wales. Yeah. One of these days, mate, we might even travel north of Watford. Well, maybe. Let's not go mad, mate. Well, <laughs> wherever we end up, I'm sure it'll be fun. But just for now, it's Toodle Pip from me. And Tatty Bye from me. Join us again next time as we take, take a pew. Take a pew.